few years ago I made a photo manipulation that I named Face Your Fears and it was really cool but now I decided to remake it or to make Face Your Fears too. Maybe this small kid is already grown up man and he needs to face his fears one more time. So let me show how I did it. I started in Blender because I wanted to create these kind of staircase and I couldn't find any stocks for this and I'm also really bad at drawing this so the best choice for me is to model it. So this is really simple and easy model and after that, after I model that, I use this model that I purchased from turbosquid.com and also the Viking that I got from cgtrader.com I think and this is already really really cool scene so then i added some pillars here and also the rocks the rocks are again free models that i got from polyhaven.com i think and uh, this is the scene really big mess but when you put a camera in and you have this kind of framing and when you add some materials this is how it looks and now the most important thing here are the lights because if you add a proper lighting setup here you can transform this photo from this a little bit boring and dull photo to this amazing dramatic result i really love it so one more time before and after this is really really cool and now maybe you're wondering well we are done with the photo manipulation what else could we do here well we can do a bunch of cool things here so let me show you that in photoshop well maybe you're asking what would i do with this image in photoshop because it already looks really cool well there are a lot of things that we can add small details and elements like this skeleton that i want to add i will put it all the way here back at these lower stairs actually on this rock i think this this looks really cool it's a little bit too big i think let's make it a little bit smaller i think a little bit more and right there i think this is okay let's unzoom it yeah i really like it let's make the skeleton a bit darker using the exposure adjustment layer okay and i will clip it to affect only the skeleton group there and uh, i think this is okay now it's time to paint back some highlights Now it's time to add a little bit of the shadows, so new layer below the skeleton and I will use multiply blending mode and sample the tone of the rock down there. Something here, okay, and now just paint the shadow. I'm happy with this, now it's time to add a second skeleton. I will use this one, I really like how this looks, so let's put it back in the scene. This one will go on these stairs right there, and I think it's a little bit too big, but let's first paint it and make it smaller. So I will use exactly the same technique like I did with the first skeleton, so exposure adjustment layer, clip it to affect only the skeleton and paint back the highlights. But before that let's make it a little bit smaller, because definitely it's too big. So maybe here on the stairs, or maybe left left here on the rock I think here it will be cool yeah okay let's make it a little bit bigger and put it here this is okay now let's start painting the highlights actually I will paint the shadow instead of the highlights just to position it a little bit right there so instead of going with exposure adjustment layer I will go with the solid color adjustment layer invert the mask and now I will select the color of the skeleton's bone and put that into multiply blending mode and with that color I will paint the shadows on the skeleton because the shadow is not black, the shadow is just the absence of light so this makes sense. Okay, let's speed up this process a little bit. Now I will create a new layer and put it into overlay blending mode and this will be for the highlights. So I will sample some kind of orange tone and maybe even brighter orange than this so let's sample a little bit brighter like this and these highlights are from the fire from the torch from that light that is in front of the skeleton so i will just paint with this tone of the orange and then i will go with even brighter and then also with the white for the brightest highlights so this is the brightest tones and yeah i really like how this looks so let's put all these layers into one group and name it skeleton on the rocks. 
Let's paint the shadow from Skeleton and I will make these lines as a helper lines just to easier see where the shadow will fall on these rocks and later I will delete them, so let's do it. This is before and let's bring the shadow and everything else and this is after, I'm really happy with the result. Now it's time to add some textures to the scene, so I will go with this rock texture, copy it and paste it right there in the scene, let's rename it to rock texture. Let's desaturate it a little bit and change the hue, maybe something like this and that's it. Let's put it into multiply blending mode, so it's semi-transparent and let's scale it a little bit. I think this is okay. And now we'll create a layer mask and just paint these parts of the wall with that texture. So basically I'm adding the texture of that rock on this wall. I will do exactly the same for a few more gaps here on the wall. Just multiply blending mode and add that texture right there. Okay, now that we are done with this, I will go and add some smoke. I want to make this scene a little bit more dramatic by adding a little bit uh, smoke element. So for that, I will use my custom made cloud dust smoke brush. By the way, you can get that brush on my website for just $1. So I will leave the link down there in the description. And now with simple white color and 20% opacity that is already set on the brush, I will just create smoke. But before that, I like to use a selection, so a quick selection tool and just select the stairs because I want to add a smoke down there in the hole right in the front of the stairs, so I don't want the stairs to be affected, so something like this is okay. Now let's add a layer mask from that selection and it's time to paint, so just with that simple brush on the layer, not on the mask, okay, on the layer right there, see how beautiful it is, so we will add a little bit of the smoke a little bit here, maybe a little bit up, not too much, but just some kind of dramatic element there. I really like the smoke. The smoke is cool, but there is too much of the smoke. So I will use the same brush with the layer mask and with a black color and just remove the smoke where I don't want to be. The key is to make the smoke there to put it there, but not that pronounced. So subtle, subtle effect, but it will be visible. Okay, here it's okay. On the back, I don't want to cover the skeleton. This is okay. I really like this guy. It's really cute. Also, I want to add a little bit a smoke effect from the dragon's feet, like he's rushing down the stairs and there is a dust rising from there. And also, I think I will add some debris there that will emphasize this effect. Okay, now it's time for a new layer and let's name it Debris and let's add some Debris. So I will use my, again, custom made Debris brush that I like to use. So let's do this one and okay, let's paint it. Sample the color from the rock, from the wall and just add a little bit of flying Debris there to emphasize the effect that actually the dragon is running down the stairs. I will use some cool web spider web brushes that I got from one website. I will leave the link down there in the description. The brushes are completely free to use for any commercial or personal projects. So that's cool. Let's use one of them. And I will put some spider web on this skeleton right there because this skeleton is a little bit bigger and I think this would be cool. So this one is cool, right? Let's make it smaller and let's tweak it a little bit and uh, position it on this poor guy right there. Okay, I ended up adding these two spider webs that you can see, so let's hide them. Okay, this one and this one, and I really like it. Now it's time for another mess, for another spider web, so let's find something cool. No, no, mm -mm. let's see this one, no, maybe something, no, mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. 
No, I don't like it, so let's go all the way down, maybe. Maybe this one. Ooh, this one looks promising, so let's make it smaller. So, something like that. Okay, I will use this one. So, yeah, let's rotate it, and I will position it between these two pillars in the front, actually, in the gap of that pillar that is broken from some reason. I don't know why, but it's cool to be broken. I actually know why it's broken, because this big dragon is running all the time down the stairs and uh, killing these guys that are facing their fears and rarely anybody really managed to face their fears so this is why the pillars are broken but we will put some spider web there to emphasize that the dragon didn't pass through these parts of the stairs for a while at least i don't know a couple of months or i don't know weeks i i'm not sure how many days it spider needs to make this kind of big web also i want to colorize this spider web a little bit to a bluish tint so let's go with the colorize option and lower the lightness and yeah something like this it's cool mm, yes i really like it a little just a little bit tint of a blue this is too much so let's lower the saturation something like this and now let's add some fire here i have this cool image of a torch flame that i will put in a screen blending mode but before that let's make a group and let's name it torch flame and yeah this is cool now let's put this into the screen blending mode and just move it on the top of this torch right there and i think this is cool also what I'm missing here is what is burning in that torch, so I have nothing now. So I'm using a lasso tool and I will just make a selection, fill it with the black and put that black thing behind the flame. So I have something in there that is burning and making this cool flame. Let's make it a little bit bigger, hmm? like that, okay. Let's spice it a little bit more, I have this, another cool photo of a fire from unsplash.com and I just want to add these kind of, I don't know how is this called in English, this portion of the fire that is flying all around the place so you will see what I mean by that if you know that word in English please let me know down there in the comments it's like like a firefly so I don't know how it's called so this cool thing I will just use a layer mask and paint this in okay something like that this is too much on the bottom so even more at the top yeah I really like it just the subtle effect it's not that visible when you zoom out but when you zoom in you, you see all these details maybe you will call me crazy but i want to add just one more detail and that's the spider web in the top right corner so let's see maybe this one and yeah, i don't want to be black i need white one so yeah like that and this will not be visible that much probably not at all unless you know it's there because i will now blur it and uh, make it out of a focus because I want to make impression that is closer to the camera. So I will position it right there. And also one more detail and that's the spider, obviously something needs to be on that web. So I need to blur the spider also. As you can see, it's barely visible. Oops, not the web, I need to move the spider. So I don't know where to put it. Maybe somewhere here, like rotate it a little bit and the spider is like, making the web and I don't know, climbing down the the frame of the photo let's blur the spider and let's add that one string of a web maybe it's too thick let's choose the color something something probably like that and i think this is cool okay this is really cool i can blur this a bit and yeah this is really really nice and it's time for a final color grading. So I will merge all the layers into one and convert that layer into a smart object. So I can go back and forth if I don't like my color grading. And let's go to Adobe Camera Raw filter. And here, let's do the final tweakings. And this is a final result. Now that I'm looking at this image more and more, I really like to see this as a movie poster or maybe some kind of a poster for a video game. If you played this kind of video game, let me know down there in the comments. And also if you want to learn how to create this kind of cool atmosphere on your photos in Photoshop, check out this video. See you there. Bye bye.